I have been in need of making dust collection for the CNC machine for a long time. In fact, every time I show something on the CNC, someone asks why I don't have dust collection set up for it. So I'm gonna start with the dust shoe at the spindle, and I'm gonna start with a design that's shown on CNC router parts webpage. And Nathaniel at CNC router parts made me a model of a version of that that has two four inch hoses for the dust collection. So that's what I'm gonna try and make. Now the big endeavor for me on this was figuring out how to make the G code to run the machine with Fusion 360. I haven't been using Fusion and I'd like to, to switch to that. So I was actually able to figure out the CAM part of that program and get it to work pretty well. So the first thing I made was a prototype, I guess, or a, a first test to make sure the sizes were right and that it would work and that what I was doing in Fusion was actually gonna make something useful. So I cut the first parts out of MDF just as, as tests to make sure the sizes were right. And it worked pretty well. I found from doing this that the, the size of the hole for the spindle was just a hair tight. So I made that a little bigger. And the cylinders for the hoses were just a little bit big. So I made those a little smaller. But the spaces for the magnets and the attachment of the, the bottom and the top piece seemed to work pretty well. And figuring out where I needed bridges and where I could get away with without using them. And working out a few of the kinks. I think some of my passes that removed a lot of the volume of the piece were set to remove different amounts. So I ended up with, with not a perfectly flat bottom. But I figured out what that was that I needed to change. And it looked like it was going to work. I could then start making the final version out of the plastic that I had gotten. I'll put something in the description of the video about what kind of plastic this is. So first I cut out the bottom half that holds the brush. And the first thing I cut out was the slot for the brush. And then I cut out the holes for the screws that attach to the magnets in the upper piece. Once it was all cut, I could then cut out the piece from, from the piece of plastic. And I've started to do a lot more where I screw my workpiece down to the table. That works better than the, than the little hold down clamps that I have. I've had too many pieces move on me. Then I could work on the upper piece, which will be cut out of a much thicker piece of the plastic. I think it's an inch and a half. And I put the screw holes in the same place so I could screw it down to the same screw holes in the table. Now, in making this part, I think there were 10 different passes to cut. So the first one is to remove a lot of the mass of the material. So it starts to define the three holes that are in the, the piece. There's a center hole that goes around the spindle, then there's a hole on each side for the hoses. Now the thought with the two hoses is that I have a six inch dust collection pipe running to this. And if you do the math, two four inch circles is actually less surface area than, than one six inch circle. So I can sort of preserve that six inch pipe by having the, the two four inch pipes. Then I can cut the holes within the, the circles. And this plastic, when you cut it with the router, it doesn't seem to make the real fine dust like wood does. It seems to make all similar sized chips. So it made a big mess, but it didn't make a lot of stuff floating in the air. Then I can cut the holes for the magnets. And I wanted to cut the slots for the fins that go around the router so it can be clamped to the or to the spindle. So I had to cut out the, the centerpiece and then I can cut those slots. Then I can cut the whole piece out of the block of plastic and it's done. <laughs> and I can remove the screws. and clean up the mess. And 
of cut the piece free from the rest of the plastic. I didn't try sanding this stuff, but I found I could cut it with a, with a knife to kind of clean it up. Now the undersides of the air intakes, I wanted to round over just to kind of help the air move up into those tubes. Then round over the top edge of the other side of those tubes as well. Then I could put the magnets in. Now the thing with this plastic is you can't really glue anything to it. Nothing sticks to it, so everything has to be friction fit. So the magnets are held in with friction and the brush is held in with friction. Then I can put the screws in. And these screws will be attracted to the magnets in the upper half, and that's what will hold this up. Now, I was beginning to notice at this point that I was getting some bending in this piece because I had removed so much material. And it's almost like there's stress in the plastic, which seemed odd. The brush isn't really sitting flat against the upper piece like it should. It's my very first run with the brush. I ran it into the workpiece and broke the bit off. So I was trying it without the brush and it, it kind of works but, but not real well. So the next piece that I want to make is a clamp that holds the flexible hoses up higher than the dust shoe. Basically so the dust shoe doesn't have to do the work of dragging the hoses around. That's what this clamp will do. So the, so the thought with the clamp was to make something that would go around the flexible hose, but would be cut in half so I could put it around the hose and then screw it together, which would then hold the hoses in place. So I cut out a shape and then put holes into the edges. Then when I cut the piece lengthwise, I can then screw it back together again with these holes. So I can cut it in half carefully. Now I need to mount it to the 8020 piece that the spindle is mounted to. So I needed to add a little piece that would let me do that. Now I had a little ledge attached here to be able to attach a camera to the spindle. And I took the piece from that to use for this. And that had all the holes drilled in it for the screws that attach to the 8020. So the back plate of this kind of slides onto that piece on the router. Then the flexible hoses can go in and go onto the dust shoe. And then the front of the clamp can go on. Now I did make a new version of this, so you can see that it's a little bit different shape from what I had before, but it works the same way. So now that clamp will hold the hoses and there won't be as much stress on the connection between the dust shoe and the hose. Now, the plan for this project is to have a new air line come in from above the CNC, but for now I'm gonna attach this to a connection that I have in the floor, just to test the, the dust shoe and kind of see if it works. So it'll be the same Y connection like this, but this will be up near the ceiling. Whereas right now, I've got a connection in the floor, and I'll just bring a pipe up to that Y connection. So I can fit a scrap piece of PVC that I have, and attach it so it doesn't move. <laughs> then attach the Y connection to that. So I thought I would test it. So I made a terrain of Mount Hood and I could do some 3D carving. I've been wanting to do more of this and this would make a lot of sawdust. <laughs> so really this project is making the sawdust and the terrain is just a byproduct of that. <laughs> So I found a nice thick piece of plywood, which was the old desk in the back side of the old kitchen. And it's a one and a half inch thick piece of old fir plywood. So I cut it down to a 
piece I could use. And I pulled off the old plastic laminate. The glue was so old it just peeled right off. Now I needed a way to hold it down to the table. So I cut two rabbits, one on each side, as basically a place to put a screw. So I could screw this down to the CNC table. Then I could attach it to the, to the table. And I did a roughing pass, just back and forth. And without the brush, I was a little nervous because it really wasn't picking up the sawdust much, even at the beginning. And as it got into things, it really wasn't picking up the sawdust much. I did discover that I had a gate open somewhere else in the shop that was taking some of the suction away. And this was a somewhat long half inch bit. So where the air was going in was a little bit far away from the surface. But it was kind of like the dust collection wasn't doing anything because <laughs> I just had a big pile of sawdust. I didn't quite get the very summit of Mount Hood. So I glued on a piece of birch plywood, which would finish off the top of the mountain and maybe look like snow on the mountain. <laughs> And I ran a little bit of the finish pass a little bit high just to kind of cut that down a little bit. And even with all the gates closed and as much suction as I could get and a shorter bit, it still wasn't picking up the sawdust very well. So I stopped it and put the brush in place. And this made a huge difference. I see why people use the brush. <laughs> When this was done, there was literally not a single speck of sawdust on the work table. It got everything. But the problem with this is you can't see the bit, or it's, it's very hard to see the bit. So I'm thinking after doing this, I need to remake the upper piece anyways because it's warping. And I have some ideas of how to make it out of wood, I think. And I'd like to play around with different amounts of brush. Like, does the brush really have to go all the way around? Can there be a, a window in it? Can it be sort of on one side and not the other side? So I think, I think that'll be for the, for the next part of this project. But I did get a nice terrain of Mount Hood out of this. And the other part of this project that needs to get finished up is the new dust collection pipe that'll come from above the CNC machine. And that's kind of a whole project in itself. So that should be coming up soon. <laughs> Thanks for watching.